Welcome back. I'm Tedward and welcome to the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. The C8 made waves because it was the first mid-engine Corvette to hit the streets in production. And then when we got wind that the Z06 was getting a flat plane crank, high revving, naturally aspirated V8 with dual overhead cams, well, that sent this car into the stratosphere. Everyone went bonkers. There's a reason why the dealer markups on these things are crazy. And I've been driving the car all day. I genuinely can't stop. I keep finding the longer way home. It is outrageously fun. It has 670 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque from this five and a half liter NAV8. And from the rear, she looks mean and it sounds meaner. Look at the quad tips right down the center. Now, when you make a flat plane crank, you gotta deal with a lot of other things. It has a dry sump oiling system with six scavenge pumps, but it needs to be able to deal with all kinds of vibrations. Flat plane V8s definitely are not the most friendly when it comes to movement, but Chevrolet put all of the due diligence into making this an absolute screamer that still fits the vibe of a Corvette buyer who wants a grand touring sports car that they can live with day to day. So the Z06 is something really special because you can go out and mob on track with the likes of Ferrari and Porsche and definitely make your mark. But you can also drive it all over the place because, okay. It has a magnetic suspension that allows it to be pretty compliant and happy over the bumps and then stiffen up and be an absolute hooligan on a racetrack or a fun back road. This is a coupe. All of the coupes come with a removable section of hardtop and that fits back in here. So let's do a little tour first. Let's take a look at what we've got here. This does not have the Z07 package. This one has the carbon ceramic brakes and it has meaty rubber. These are the Pilot Sport 4S, a 275 section tire up front and a 345 section tire in the rear. That's pretty meaty. Now, one of the reasons this is a mid-engine car since the C7 is that it needs to be able to put the power down. 670 horsepower is no joke. And if you have a front engine set up with a 50-50 weight distribution, well, you're going to start getting light on that rear end. So now this is 60% weight in the rear, helping push all that power down to the ground. But that means lots of cooling needs to be introduced into the Z06. And it has a lot more cooling because it needs a lot more cooling than the standard Z8 with its pushrod V8. So there's actually extra cooling up front, right in the center. And they've even made the transmission a little cooler to handle the additional torque. Now this has the carbon flash aero kit so you get these beautiful canards up front this monster wing in the rear although i do think the sort of like touring look with the little wing looks pretty darn cool but i think this fits the rear end of the car because honestly for me the corvette the c8 it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but i do think that the z06 takes it to the next level and really rounds it off and makes it feel special but how practical can it really be well because we're a mid-engine car, we have a trunk and a frunk. So if we open this, first we reveal this gorgeous engine bay. Holy cow, the LT6 is no joke. And she's a bit warm right now. Look at those big old throttle bodies, so cool. And then we've got reasonable space. You could probably fit a set of golf clubs if you were one of those people. I'm not one of those people, I don't care. I throw my backpack in here and cargo net, but you can also throw that roof section back here. So. You don't have to worry about like, well, I left it at home. No, you can take that with you and still have some storage space left over because we have a frunk. Also, this is soft clothes. How lovely is that? And the beauty, you can see your engine through the glass. One of the reasons why I do dig the coupe because in the convertibles, I think that gets covered up. Double press. Up front, we have a very like aventadori looking hood and it kind of looks like a jack-o'-lantern. By the way, I'm filming this on Halloween, so this Amplify Orange is the perfect color for the fall foliage in addition to the holiday. But up front, we do have a small frunk. It's deep, it's not quite as large as what you'd find in a Porsche, but still does the job. To get inside and open these doors, we reach under here. 
revealing this gorgeous interior. We have our square and somewhat controversial steering wheel with carbon and Alcantara or micro suede as they say. Um, and then the GT2 seats. These buckets are lovely. They have great lumbar support. They look the part. They look pretty outrageous, especially with the carbon around here. And we've got color matched seat belts. Deviated stitching in leather. This is the 3LT package. Big money, guys, but still not bigger money than what you would pay in Porsche or Ferrari land because at $147,000, pretty loaded up. This is definitely closer to the starting price of the GT3 and nowhere near the astronomical prices that Ferrari would be charging you. So although it's not cheap, it is in fact a bargain, which is a bummer because I wish it was closer to 100 grand. But I guess if you got a stripper model, which I'm sure very few will, you get that closer to 112 assuming you can get it without dealer markups. I recommend starting the Z06 with the door open because this is a very exotic sound. And in park and neutral, it's going to limit my revs to 3,000. But if you want to show off for your friends, you put it in drive, you pull both paddles, you'll see that turns blue. And now you can rev. But just remember, you're in neutral at that point, so you will have rollback problems. And, uh, you know, you don't want to look stupid by crashing your Z06 at one mile per hour. But let's start it again from the outside because you gotta hear it from the tips. Chevrolet has made it incredibly easy to start the car from the outside because the center button on this key fob pressed twice. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you're gonna wake up all the neighbors! Let's see how she gets off the line. Not gonna do launch control, just gonna mat it. That's really special. <laughs> now, I did peel off the throttle a little bit because these tires are pretty cold. And it's getting a little squirrely. I mean, this is this will allow for some slip. The DCT is fast, very fast, but sometimes a little inconsistent. Like I don't always know what kind of shift I'm gonna get. Is it gonna be a really hard shift? Is it gonna be an aggressive shift? Or is it gonna be a soft one that just rolls off the paddle? We would have to be going absolutely crazy to express this. I mean, that's why this needs to be on a racetrack occasionally. You can't own this car and not have a track near you. that it makes on the overrun and those shifts, it's so good because this doesn't feel like a burble tune, right? It's not giving me bum, 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 bum. I'm not shooting napalm out the back, but it does give me just enough that it feels really organic and proper. Just like that. It's egging me on a lot. I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be good because I would like for GM to give me lots of vehicles to play with in the future. <laughs> so GM, this self-restraint is for you, but I am still enjoying myself significantly. Playing with the paddles, overshifting the car because it is entertaining. Now, I do wish these paddles had a little more tactility. They're a little plasticky. And if this had sort of that McLaren thunk, that nice click, it would go a long way. But 
reality is they operate, they function, they do what they're supposed to do. So I can't complain too, too much about the tactility, especially because this is not a three or $400,000 car. Even as it sits, this is an expensive spec at 147,000. The brakes brake by wire. I'm not connected to anything. And they feel really good. These are well tuned. That's not always the case when companies try to make that happen. And these feel fantastic. And they can be adjusted. You can adjust how intense they feel under the foot. Um, I'm really digging what I'm feeling. And the fact that these are carbon ceramics as well, and I'm getting that bite instantly. I mean, there's no, there's no waiting. I'm not really that warmed up. We're just kind of cruising on the back road. So this is certainly not like track temps that we're playing with. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I've never liked a Corvette more, honestly. I, I can't believe this is where we're at with the Z06. I can't believe that an American car with this kind of legacy has gotten this dialed, this refined, and this exciting. Corvettes of the past have always been incredibly fun, but they've been brute force. Sure, they can handle outrageous track limits. They're faster than some of their more expensive German and, it and Italian competitors, but they were sledgehammers. And this is a scalpel. This feels so much more refined, so much sharper, so much more dialed. And you feel it instantly. The second this thing starts, you know, you know you're onto something. like the last great day in New England until the winter starts to hit. Fall is always very short and it goes from like 70, 80 degrees to like 30 degrees really quick. We're at 45 degrees today and this heated steering wheel is really, really good right now. To have heated seats and a heated steering wheel in your essentially supercar is just amazing especially with these gt2 seats they don't have to give you that but the corvette customer expects a little bit of luxury like these where I'm kind of mourning the end of these types of cars. The fact that this is out, new, in 2023 is already kind of a heroic thing. Even Ferrari is all turbos and hybrids and stuff now. Here we go into the electrified next generation and here's GM giving us a naturally aspirated flat plane V8 with almost 700 horsepower. I'm about the next generation. I do think that there's going to be some good, fun, entertaining toys coming in the future that are different, that are going to take a little bit of adaptation to get to the point where I really respect them. But right here, right now, this car, this engine, this sound, this feeling, I don't know how to beat this. And for that, I am going to be an ice stand because I don't want to let this go. I'm not ready to let this go. And I'm really thankful that a car like this has still managed to come along in the modern era. There 
are some fake engine noises in the car. That's not all organic. It's getting piped in a little bit. I think they just do it to kind of soften some of the NVH and a little bit of the harshness of this engine, some of the rattles and things. But I mean, I think I would have taken it. I, I get that the Corvette customer is a little different than the Porsche customer though. Cummington. gets up to speed on the highway incredibly quick, but it's refined. It's a lovely place to be. This is the greatest thing about a Corvette is that now we're getting like supercar performance from a flat plane V8, but we're also getting a reasonable and comfortable place to live in the real world. Not all of our roads are perfectly grooved. We have bumps and potholes and Maybe you just want to be on the road for hours and hours on end. And the current GT3 is kind of brutal. It's very stiff. And I know we're talking about supercars. We should forgive all of these things. But the reality is not all supercar or sports car buyers really want to live an uncomfortable life. Some of us need lumbar support. Some of us don't want to hear squeaks and rattles from our aging Lamborghinis <laughs> and this Corvette. Kind of splits the difference. That's a beautiful thing. All right, let's settle it down a little bit. Put it into tour mode. It closes valves, it gets a little quieter, it dials down the engine sound, the steering, the suspension gets a little softer. And I can just crush miles. I've already done almost 100 miles in this car today, and I'm feeling refreshed. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling like I just want to keep going. I can't actually believe I've been in the car this long. It doesn't feel like I've done very many miles, but I have. More docile downshift in touring mode. takes these bumps better than my Honda Civic Type R, I think. <laughs> Mag ride is a beautiful thing. Something that annoys me a little bit is that this $147,000 car, I know we've optioned out quite a lot of extras on the thing, so we can't count all of it against it, but in typical Chevy fashion, some of the touch points are not a favorite. Um, these blinker stocks, they're fine on the engagement, it's on the disengagement that I don't like it. They never like release quite so well. And I know you can argue, well, Tom, just don't push it all the way. And you're right, you don't have to push it all the way, but it's still annoying that that's a thing. I want that to just be dialed in. That's something that companies like Hyundai, Kia get really, really right. Those little touch points do the job, but that's not the point. It's just that if we're digging for things to uh, dislike about the Z06, I, that's just a little baby one. This cabin is so comfortable, we're gonna hit a bump. I mean, it just absorbs everything. And that's what's wild, is that this is a track beast that's gonna put a lot of expensive supercars on notice, and it's gonna sound the part and drive the part, but it's also comfortable to drive to and from the track. You don't need to trailer this. That's amazing. You can put this thing on the road, drive it hours and hours and hours to your track day, assuming you have all the equipment you need, <laughs> and then go do the thing and drive it home. That's somewhere you're gonna end up quite frequently because we definitely don't get great fuel economy. I've been on the highway for a while and I'm reading 16 and a half MPGs. That's kind of as good as I can get. I think if we did a really long trip, I could eke out 17, maybe 18, but this is a thirsty engine. This LT6 loves fuel. 
taken a picture here before but it seems worth it this is so beautiful look at that all right let's make like savage geese and get the flock out of here I like it. I do. It's certainly not a hydraulic, beautiful rack of the past, but it does a good job. It weights up nicely. I haven't really been questioning what's going on with the front wheels. It's pretty intuitive, and it's not too fast. As long as you get in these newfangled, super and sports cars, and you give it the tiniest bit of input, and the, the car's across the road. It feels like it's dialed in properly, and you can tell by the way that this car just immediately becomes part of you, that they spent a lot of time tuning. They spent a lot of time making decisions. They spent a lot of time trial and error and getting it right. And you're not gonna need to go and do a ton of stuff to this to make it the way you want it. And it just sounds insane all the time. So I think that's gonna do it for me in the Corvette Z06. I hope this helped show that the driving experience is worth the hype. This car is very good. This is easily the best Corvette I've ever driven and it's one of the best cars I've driven all year. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'm gonna continue to take the long way everywhere because I have nowhere to be but in this car. What a great day. first time in a while outside of a sort of sanctioned or organized rally that I've really gone out exploring by myself and I knew that having an orange Z06 was going to mean I needed to go find some roads I needed to go explore a little bit now that doesn't mean it doesn't mean you go terrorize the nation you don't need to go 100 miles an hour everywhere there's a level of enthusiasm that's appropriate and there's a level of enthusiasm that is obnoxious and unnecessary. We gotta strike that balance so we can be respectable members of the automotive community and so that everyone doesn't hate us.